Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our next session. I'm Rachel McIntosh, if we haven't met already. So our next session today is going to answer a very important question. Compared to 2018, how does today's economic environment affect US dollars, gold, and silver markets? And further, are these markets headed toward a sort of breaking point? And if so, when? Um, I'm extremely uh, pleased to introduce Mr. Ashraf Laidi, who will talk to us through, uh, excuse me, who will talk us through a thorough survey of the opportunities and risks that are present in today's financial landscape. Unfortunately, Ashraf is unable to join us in person today because of travel restrictions. He sends his regards, and we will have his keynote speech presented to us in video format. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the IFX Expo. This is Ashraf Laidi and I am doing this presentation for XM Markets. Sorry I couldn't be in Dubai uh, with you uh, due to some unforeseen uh, reasons, uh, but we are going to try to communicate uh, the best of our message here regarding the market. So let's just get through it. Right to it. Uh, trading the FX and metals analog of 2018. What are we talking about? Well, let's go. So basically, just going through this is that we're going to start with the chart of the dollar index, weekly chart. So you've got here this part of 2017-18 and this part of 2020 and 21. And the dollar index is, seems very, very similar. So let's just go into this. So from the highs of December 2000, and, uh, from the highs in the dollar of late 16 or early 17 to the bottom of uh, March 2000. And 18, the dollar fell basically 14%. And from the highs of, let's say, March 2020, the reaction to the COVID and the risk aversion, uh, basically uh, from there to the summer of 2020, the dollar fell 13, uh, 13%. So very similar. And the relationship goes farther. The similarity goes farther. Basically, when you look at the DXY, the dollar index, which is in the bottom, and then you com and then you overlay it. Uh, so the white uh, chart. Uh, so the white chart is the S and P five hundred, and you can see it's gained here from early um, seventeen into uh, mid eighteen. And then you had from this year, from March uh, two thousand and twenty, from the bottom of March two thousand twenty, from the bottom of March last year until here. But what's and you can say that it's not hard to get a similarity across time where charts of the end of the S&P go up. But here's what's interesting. In both charts, also, we, go, we saw yields rising through the same uh, period. The U.S. 10-year yield, they rose here. You see here? Uh, basically from uh, late 2017, early 2018. Okay? And so... Does the similarity continue? Well, it does not, because you can see here. So March 2018, the U.S. dollar broke out. But here, it pushed up, and now it's falling into the spring of this year. So let's go further. The similarity is clear. Rising bond yields, rising bond yields, rising stocks, rising stocks. Dollar falls, dollar falls. And then it pushes higher. And in here, it pushes higher until things change. And what we're going to do in this presentation is how are these things change? And will the breakdown of the analog continue? So let's look at something here. Uh, this is the 10-year yield spread. This is the U.S. 10-year yield minus China. Okay? So basically, this is the graph right now. And this is the U.S. dollar versus the CNH versus the uh, Chinese yuan um, offshore. It's not dissimilar to dissimilar to the dollar index. So what this chart shows you is that minus 149, meaning that U.S. minus 10-year yields in China, they are, uh, they are improving to the benefit of the U.S., but they're still negative, okay? So, and, um, and this is the U.S. dollar falling against the Chinese yuan, meaning uh, 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 buying less yuan. So... Uh, last year, in 2020, after COVID, after March and April, the dollar was falling across the board, and it fell, and then it rallied a little bit from the spring. But here is what we need to look at. So this is 2017. 
and 18, okay? So this is the spread, U.S. spread minus China spread. So the spread went up, meaning in favor of the U.S. dollar, and then it broke. And as it broke, the U.S. dollar broke against the Chinese yuan in summer and in, in, in spring and summer 2018. But things are different. The U.S. dollar is trying to break higher, but look what it's doing meaning the interest rate differential in, in terms in favor of the U.S., uh, because this is U.S. minus China, as this improves, this is in favor of uh, the U.S., it doesn't matter whether it's where the absolute value is still negative, you pay attention to spreads. When look at what happened here. The spread U.S. minus China is failing to break above the high. And what we see Unlike in 2018, when the spread in favor of the U.S. was moving in terms of the, in favor of the U.S. and we broke higher, part of the reason we had the war with the you know, trade war with China, and that let the dollar index pushed up, uh, or and the dollar pushing up against the Chinese yuan. This is very different right now. And so this is the monthly chart. So this is the U.S. D versus the CNH monthly chart, but this is the USD dollar index and clearly the analog. So let's just go back to the beginning of this of this presentation. So this was the similarity, dollar index weekly, okay, 2017-18. Uh, we broke up as bond yields went up and even US spread, yield spread went farther higher in favor of the US, but not this time. And this is where we are here, okay? And now the dollar index is breaking down below 89. It's likely going to go into the 70s later this year. So but what's behind this move if you want to look for the fundamentals? The Federal Reserve has pivoted from inflation to unemployment. It has moved the goalposts. So the Federal Reserve is increasingly convincing the markets that it will not tighten policy. It will not taper. It will not reduce the purchases of assets until unemployment has fallen adequately. Adequately. So a year ago, we used to say we want inflation to push up. We want inflation to go uh, towards 2%. We are moving towards a higher inflation slightly above 2%. But now inflation is racing towards the 3%. So what's going on on the month to month they're saying, oh, no, that's not enough for us to tighten policy. We want unemployment rate to fall further. So they are increasingly convincing. Anywhere you hear, any member from the Federal Reserve, any member, uh, as we speak today, uh, yesterday, uh, a Clarida, Richard Clarida, who is the vice Fed chair, basically put it very bluntly. He said, yes, there is a rise in inflation, but it's going to be transitory. And I'm looking for unemployment to fall further. And when you get unemployment rising, like the last figure that we had, that is a sell dollar signal because he said, look, the new goal posts that they are targeting is not good enough. Unemployment is falling. Uh, sorry, unemployment is rising. Payrolls is disappointing, even if unemployed, even if inflation is pushing higher. So what about inflation, you may say? Well, until when this is going to continue? Until when they're going to ignore inflation and target unemployment? What's going to happen with inflation? Well, they're calling the inflation transitory. Temporary, not lasting. It's supply-driven, not really demand-driven. Yes, the market is reopening, but it's supply-driven. Pivoting policy from inflation towards unemployment aims at managing bond market expectations, telling the bond market do not worry about inflation. It's only temporary. Yes, you may see 10-year yield pushing towards 1.6 power, 1.67, 1.6, 1.7. But this is going to continue to let them sustain liquidity, keep the asset purchases at the expense of yield in the U.S. dollar. But surely, you may say, the Fed will have to start tapering somehow, reducing monthly asset purchases. Some people are saying they're going to signal it at the Jackson Hole policy meeting or the Jackson Hole symposium in late August. When, so when unemployment, so when unemployment falls further and inflation becomes a problem. So when does unemployment, when the when when the decline in unemployment becomes a problem and inflation becomes a problem? Yes, it will be. But when? So how high will the U.S. dollar rally when they start to taper? Eventually, they're going to start to taper or signaling. How high will it rally? Ha, that is the question. 
And how ugly would it be for stocks? You know, it might be a bubble, uh, yields are uh, suppressed, stocks are falling. But when the Fed comes in and says we're going to start to taper or we are, this is the time we're going to start taper, they're going to try to do it as discreetly as possible. But as discreetly as possible, there will be an adjustment and the dollar will rise and markets will fall. But would it really happen? Well, so how ugly would it be for, the, for stocks when the punch ball is removed? Well, the plan, ladies and gentlemen, is to drive up inflation to the extent of delivering the deficit. I'll tell you what that means. Inflation rate, to the, uh, to the, the, to the extent that inflation is rising and, fa and rising faster than bond yields. This means that real bond yield will decline. Real bond yields are negative, but they need to fall further. And that's what will weigh on the dollar. That will lead to faster nominal GDP growth, a deficit inflated away, and USD falling, that's good for indices, metals, and cryptos. Look at this chart. The red one is the current deficit, percentage of GDP. As it goes down, it is worsening. And this is the, sorry, this is the current account deficit, and this is the budget deficit. These are going further and further down. We're going to go to 25%, 20%. And the, the relationship between the dollar falling, the yellow chart falling as the deficit expanding, as the deficit expanding is very clear. See here, in 2007 and 8. The current account deficit improved, meaning th this was negative and it became less of a negative, and, that's, and this helped the dollar a little bit. But as this drops to 5%, 6%, the dollar is going to have to go nowhere but down. What about the dollar index today? Well, dollar index today, this is a weekly chart. You see here the fractal. Some of you have seen my charts before. Very similar here what happened in 2001, 2002, the triple high there. And then we start to fall, and there's a similarity here, 2016, 17, 18. Okay, this is the RSI. Let's look at the similarities. We broke, this is the weekly chart, we broke the trend line support in 2002, we broke the trend line support in 2020, and we broke below the 100-week moving average, which is the green, just like we did, and we're getting close towards the 86, which is basically the 200-week moving average, the yellow one. And now, dollar in gold, look at gold. It has broken above a key trend line resistance. We are looking to reach, and we've broken above the 200-day moving average, and we are looking to break towards the 1900s. Silver, this is the cup and handle weekly chart. After we have respected what you call the cup and handle support lows, around not more than 50%, we are likely to go towards the mid-30s. Okay? Uh, so basically, this is what's going on here in, this, in, this, uh, in these trades. Okay? And... For, and you may say, how do we trade this? Well, this is some of these, uh, some of the euro dollar chart that we showed to our members. So basically, when euro dollar failed to break this trend line resistance the first time a few weeks ago, and it came back down, and just as it tested towards one, basically one, um, one twenty sixty, one twenty seventy, that was a great level for us to go into it. And actually, it was, sorry, 1960, 1970, it's trend line resistance. This was the great buy signal, and it was during the aid, I remember. So, and this was, open the door towards that. And this is, as we speak, today is a 122.40. How about these other levels? Let's look at some things that we've done here. So, this is something that we've done for our, uh, uh, for our uh, members here. So, if you look at this, so this is the sterling dollar uh, three Fridays ago. Sterling dollar came in, and we noticed there's a fractal. The similarity and the asymmetry of what happened on the left falling is really similar to what's going on in the right. And basically, we went in here on a long entry to go long, 37.80, and targeting 42.20. Today, we have reached 42.20. Today, as we speak, and I'm recording this on May the 18th, 2021, we hit 42.20. The similarity is palpable. And we converted it for those who speak Arabic. We basically have this. We gave this to our uh, uh, clients. And basically, we were here, 3780. We went up, came down, and, it's ex and it went, and it's completed this full term in an amazingly, incredibly um, clear, um, uh, clear, symmetric fractal and what about gold and gold here is another story here what we do for gold basically this was before gold broke towards 1870 
This is when we were around 1796. We broke the trend line resistance. We broke them. And this is when we said the next level is 1825. And that's where we are. Many other things that we're doing. We hope you will and you are enjoying uh, your expo. Again, if you have any questions, you can contact us, ladies and gentlemen, in here. You can follow me on Twitter at a lady. Contact me, Ashraf, at ashrafladi.com, or you can contact us at XM International Support. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of your time in Dubai.